Welcome to the Big Island, where Toyota has chosen to launch the 2015 Camry. The Camry is by far their most important and highest volume vehicle in the lineup. Now, typically they would do a model changeover every four to five years. However, it was just three years ago with the 2012 model that we had an all new Camry. And now, three years later, we have essentially another all new Camry. In fact, that roof is the only thing that's left over. 90% of what you're looking at is completely changed over from the 2014 model year. The first thing you will notice about the redesign of the Camry is this grill. It looks a lot like the Avalon and Corolla grill, so it's all starting to come together as a family resemblance. In fact, the 2015 Yaris will also have a similar grill. There are actually two different types of grill. There's this five bar grill and a honeycomb grill for the sportier models. What hasn't changed for the 2015 Camry is what's under the hood. You still have the same two engine options. The high volume engine is going to be a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine that produces 178 horsepower. What we have here is the 3.5 liter V6, which produces 268 horsepower, but this only accounts for about 12% of sales. Now don't be surprised if in the next two or three years, this engine will be replaced by a two liter turbo that would be a couple of hundred pounds lighter, quicker, and more fuel efficient. Like most vehicles in the midsize sedan segment, the Camry is front wheel drive. Both engines are mated to a six speed automatic transmission. The four cylinder will achieve 35 miles per gallon on the highway, 25 in the city for a combined 28, the V6 slightly less. Toyota went through a lot of effort to add some emotional appeal to this vehicle. Now, I know it's hard to get excited about driving a mid-sized sedan, no matter which one it is, but at the end of the day, the real exciting part about owning one of these cars is how dependable they are, how reliable, and the great resale value. These things are rock stars, not the kind of rock stars like Ferrari or Lamborghini, but more like you never have to worry about them. You're going to drive them for three or four years, then you can hand me, you know, hand those down to someone, or you can sell it and get good resale value. Now, little things like this fuel filler door, as you can see, it has bend in it. Now, bending sheet metal costs money, and you know, a lot of costs went into this redesign, and this is one example of this high shoulder line and how they continued it all the way through a simple thing like where you put the gas in the car. For 2015, there are six gasoline Camry models, starting with the base LE coming in at $22,970, followed by the SE, XLE, and an all new model known as the XSE, which comes in at $26,150. There are two V6 models, the XSE and XLE. Both come in at $31,370. In the three years since Toyota introduced the last Camry in 2012, just about every major competitor has been redesigned, including the Accord, the Sonata, and the Fusion. So Toyota really had to step up its game with this 2015 model, and they did. They addressed all the things that consumers should want and do want in a mid-size sedan. For example, the interior has been redone, but from a driving dynamics perspective, when you go over bumps, you'll notice the car is stiffer and it handles bumps much better. The steering has been tightened up. It's electronic power steering, uh, but it's been dialed in much better. It, everything about the Camry just works better. So you had a vehicle that was already the best selling in the segment with over 400,000 units annually, and they just improved it in every way from design on the outside, inside, and driving dynamics. I'd like to consider myself a little bit of a seat snob. I like to be comfortable. And the outgoing Camry, the seats were just okay. This Camry, the seats are considerably improved, and that's important. I don't care whether you're little or big, you should be concerned with a comfortable seat and we really like what they've done. Now what I don't like about the seats is that while the driver's side is completely adjustable, you can raise it, lower it, adjust the lumbar, uh, the passenger seat you can't raise and lower in the middle to lower trim levels and I think they should at least have that option. You get into a German car, I don't care if it's a base Jetta, you can still raise and lower the seat. The interior enhancements are significant. Depending on the infotainment package you get, you can get up to a seven inch 
screen and it is high definition vivid and bold the buttons they're massive buttons too many cars today try and jam in too much information into a small area and it's really hard to figure it out especially while you're driving but not with the new Camry big bold buttons and this is an all-new center stack now speaking of center the TFT screen between the gauges again on the middle to upper trim levels is all new and you can toggle through all sorts of information you can have your uh, navigation displayed on here you can have your average fuel economy tire pressure all the important things that you need you become your own technician with this information I know other car companies are doing it but this is new for the Camry and it's brilliant Toyota also focused on the quality of materials in this Camry when you get into this Camry it feels like a Lexus from a few years ago that's how much they've really stepped up their game for example you have this contrast stitching that is now real contrast stitching whereas in the old model it was just kind of embedded to make it look like contrast stitching so it's those little uh, design touches that make you feel like you're driving a more expensive car driving a midsize sedan may not be the most exciting thing but as long as you have to drive one you might as well drive one that looks good that drives nicely and looks great on the inside a lot of luxury appointments uh, in this Camry and when you look at the price range from 22,000 to about 34 for a top end uh, model uh, you can get a lot so the question comes do you if you are in that top end about to spend thirty two thirty four thousand dollars do you get an entry-level Lexus that's pretty bare-bones or a top-of-the-line Camry well that's up to you